In early October 2025, a remarkable astronomical event took place that captivated scientists. The interstellar object known as 3I Atlas passed within approximately 30 million kilometers of Mars. This was a rare opportunity for humanity to study a visitor from beyond our solar system at close range. The high-resolution imaging science experiment camera aboard NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter was tasked with capturing high-resolution images of this event on the 2nd and 3rd of October. The data collected was of immense scientific value, offering an unprecedented level of detail with a spatial resolution of 30 kilometers per pixel, around three times sharper than the best image publicly available from the Hubble Space Telescope, which had been taken earlier on the 21st of July that same year. Unlike the Hubble image, which observed Atlas from an edge-on perspective with Earth and the Sun separated by about 10 degrees relative to the object, the high-resolution imaging science experiment observations provided a more sideways view. This vantage point promised vital insights into how the object was shedding material and interacting with sunlight as it journeyed through the inner solar system. For scientists, this was not just another data set. It was an opportunity to understand the structure, motion, and possibly even the composition of a body that originated outside our solar neighborhood. However, despite the immense anticipation, NASA did not release the high-resolution imaging science experiment images for several weeks after their capture. The delay lasted nearly a month, and by the end of October, the data remained unavailable to the scientific community. The official explanation pointed to the government shutdown that had begun on the 1st of October as the cause of the holdup. According to this account, administrative functions within NASA had been disrupted, preventing the timely processing and publication of the images. While this explanation appeared plausible, the delay sparked intense speculation. Some voices within the public sphere began to wonder if the real reason behind the withheld data was far more intriguing. A number of people suggested that the images might contain evidence of something extraordinary, perhaps signs of advanced technology or artificial features on the interstellar object itself. Theories like these quickly spread, especially online, where discussions about extraterrestrial intelligence often gain momentum. When asked about these claims, Avi Loeb, a well-known astrophysicist and advocate for transparent scientific inquiry, addressed the situation directly. He suggested that the delay was unlikely to have anything to do with alien intelligence and more likely reflected a form of bureaucratic inefficiency, what he described as a symptom of terrestrial foolishness rather than cosmic mystery. He emphasized that the scientific process should never be obstructed by political or administrative delays, especially when dealing with time-sensitive data that could benefit ongoing research. Avi Loeb further expressed his disappointment that valuable scientific information had been withheld during such a critical moment. As astronomers around the world planned follow-up observations and modeling studies to better understand Atlas, every day of delay meant lost opportunities. Open data sharing, in his view, was essential to collective progress. The longer the data remained locked away, the greater the setback to the broader scientific effort to decode the secrets of this interstellar traveler. The situation soon drew attention beyond the academic community. During a conversation with Joe Rogan, Loeb was encouraged to reach out to NASA's interim administrator, Sean Duffy. Taking this suggestion to heart, Loeb contacted Congresswoman Anna Paulina Luna to discuss the issue further. Their correspondence led to a formal request being drafted to NASA, urging the agency to release the high-resolution imaging science experiment images without further delay. Representative Luna's intervention was both prompt and decisive. She wrote an articulate and impassioned letter to Acting Administrator Duffy, highlighting the importance of transparency and the advancement of frontier science. Her letter underscored the responsibility of national space agencies to serve the scientific community and the public interest. By advocating for the immediate release of the high-resolution imaging science experiment data, Representative Luna demonstrated a commitment to open scientific collaboration, a principle vital to discovery and understanding. Avi Loeb expressed deep appreciation for her support, noting that her actions reflected a genuine dedication to the pursuit of knowledge and the protection of scientific integrity. The episode surrounding NASA's delay in releasing the Atlas images ultimately became more than just a story about one interstellar object. It served as a reflection of the broader tension between scientific exploration and institutional bureaucracy. 
For many, it reinforced the belief that the pursuit of truth in science must remain unimpeded by the shifting tides of political circumstances. The cosmos does not wait for human schedules, and opportunities to learn from its rare visitors must be seized when they arise. In the last few hours, social media platforms have erupted with reports claiming that 3i Atlas transmitted a message to Earth. What began as scattered whispers across niche communities quickly escalated into a storm of viral posts, reaching hundreds of thousands of people in mere hours. The story gained traction because it coincided with fresh telescope data released to select research groups, and soon speculation turned into widespread suspicion that something monumental had just taken place. On the 5th of June, 2025, the SETI Institute confirmed that a narrowband radio signal had been received from the direction of Kepler 442b, a potentially habitable exoplanet located roughly 1,200 light years away. For over four decades, SETI has scanned the skies in search of meaningful transmissions, logging and analyzing thousands of unusual bursts of static, pulsar noise, and satellite interference. But this signal stood apart from the rest. It did not arrive randomly. It repeated. Even more surprising, the signal's modulation patterns carried unmistakable traces of structure, as if encoded language had been woven into its intervals. Scientists who compared it to traditional codes like Morse noted the resemblance, but stressed that it was far more complex, with levels of organization beyond any natural explanation. The first press briefing revealed how extraordinary this find was. Dr. Lena Ramani, an astrophysicist from Berkeley who had long collaborated with SETI, addressed the world. Her voice trembled as she described the phenomenon. She admitted that it was unlike anything the Institute had ever encountered and acknowledged that the patterns bore the unmistakable hallmarks of intelligence. She stopped short of drawing absolute conclusions but made it clear the discovery was far beyond ordinary space noise. Then the stream abruptly cut off, mid-question, and never returned. Viewers initially thought it was a technical glitch, but when the press conference vanished entirely without follow-up, unease began to spread. Two days later, on the 7th of June, an anonymous user on an underground forum posted what they claimed was an internal NASA briefing document. While the source seemed questionable, the file contained technical data that was far too elaborate to dismiss. Spectrograms, waveform breakdowns, encryption models, and even AI-assisted translations were included. The most shocking part was a partial transcript of the decoded message. It stated, We have watched. We come in cycles. You are not alone. Prepare. The starkness of the words fueled an online firestorm. Independent researchers, data analysts, and amateur astronomers rushed to examine the document, cross-referencing its content against known signal analysis techniques. The thread exploded across platforms, leaping from online forums that investigate the unknowns of our world to mainstream social media, with entire communities working in real time to unravel the mystery. By the 9th of June, the information vanished. Threads were deleted, accounts banned, links erased, even archived snapshots disappeared. To many, this erasure only reinforced the suspicion that something genuine had slipped out. Two days later, on the 11th of June, the White House issued a carefully worded statement. It acknowledged that anomalies had been detected in communication arrays, but insisted there was no evidence suggesting an intelligent origin. The message also urged the public to ignore misinformation spreading on unofficial platforms. That same day, NASA's Deep Space Network went offline for what they described as scheduled maintenance. SETI's official website, locked into restricted access, and the Allen Telescope Array livestream, once running around the clock, displayed only an error page. The timing of these shutdowns was too precise to be dismissed as coincidence. Soon after, a whistleblower using the alias Jake stepped forward. He had previously worked with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and his credentials were verified before his profile was scrubbed from the internet. He revealed that the transmission had not been a one-way occurrence. Earth's scientists had sent a ping back to the source and multiple responses had been received in return. These replies were transmitted across different frequencies, carrying the unmistakable fingerprints of intelligence. When pressed further about the content of the new messages, he revealed only that it was not a threat, but an invitation. Despite the magnitude of this revelation, media coverage dwindled. 
Major networks avoided the story, independent journalists reported unusual difficulties in publishing, and podcast episodes covering the subject vanished from their platforms. Even notable scientists who spoke out seemed to retract their statements. Neil deGrasse Tyson briefly wrote that first contact might not be dramatic, but instead strangely ordinary, only to delete the remark shortly afterward. What should have been the most significant news of the century seemed to dissolve into silence. As the days passed, strange visual phenomena were reported in the skies. On the 15th of June, amateur astronomers in Chile, Japan and Canada began documenting flashes of light from the direction of Kepler 442b. Unlike supernovas or stellar bursts, these appeared as deliberate pulses, repeating in a pattern. Three flashes, followed by six, then three again, in cycles occurring roughly every 19 hours. Some observers linked the sequence to the original transmission intervals. Others speculated it might be a countdown or a form of secondary communication. The absence of confirmation from mainstream observatories only deepened the mystery. While governments and institutions maintained silence, the public conversation spread through social media, encrypted channels and grassroots networks of skywatchers. Every new observation was shared, debated and analysed, but official acknowledgement remained absent. For those who had followed the story from the beginning, the sequence of events formed a clear timeline. A structured signal was received, it was decoded into an intelligible message, Earth responded and multiple responses were sent back. Then came a coordinated effort to suppress public knowledge. The decoded phrase prepare became the focus of debate. What were humans being asked to prepare for? Some argued that it was an announcement of arrival, a warning that a presence was drawing nearer. Others believed it was an invitation for dialogue, a call for humanity to step beyond isolation and into a galactic community. A smaller group feared that the message signaled a shift in cycles, suggesting that whatever intelligence had reached out had done so many times before, always watching, always waiting, returning according to some unknown timetable. The flashes of light repeating in their 363 pattern were seen as proof that the message had extended beyond radio waves and into visual signalling. This dual method communication demonstrated a sophistication that left little doubt as to its deliberate nature. Combined with the whistleblower's statement that Earth's response had been acknowledged, it formed a chain of evidence too compelling to ignore. The silence of institutions has become its own message. By withdrawing access, restricting data and avoiding the subject in public forums, they have only confirmed the reality of the phenomenon to those who have seen the evidence. Instead of calming speculation, the silence has fueled suspicion that humanity stands on the edge of contact and that governments are struggling with how to manage the revelation. The events of June 2, 2025 mark a turning point in humanity's story. For decades, people speculated about the possibility of receiving a message from the stars. Few expected it to arrive with such clarity, repetition and undeniable structure. Fewer still imagined that it would be followed by deliberate suppression and silence. Yet the facts remain. A message came. It was decoded. Earth replied, and the reply was answered. The truth of this moment may not be broadcast across televisions or printed in headlines, but it exists in the records of those who paid attention. It exists in the flashes of light witnessed by skywatchers, in the documents briefly leaked online and in the words prepare that continue to echo in every conversation about what comes next.